Dave, before we, we get to this for Bison basketball season in 2019-2020, talk about some of the guys that are coming into the program that are freshmen that are from Moorhead or, or Breckenridge and kind of ca- talk about the core that that's back. I know uh, Landon's light, you guys are having a night. You mentioned it earlier this week on Monday for the exhibition game on October the 30th against uh, Dickinson State. Some of the proceeds in that game will also be going back to the Roger Maris Cancer Center. So uh, first things first, what does this mean to have a night for Landon, number one, but also kind of, you know, remembering him, number two, and then number three, obviously bringing some awareness, maybe some uh, raising some funds for, obviously, as, as you mentioned on Monday, cancer sucks. And I think for a lot of people, they've been impacted by cancer in some way or another throughout their lifetime. Yeah. Chase, it's great to be on with you guys, and, th- and thanks for having us on. And, uh, you know, when you touched that you were, you were there Monday, and, and we're visiting about it again, and, and in so many ways, really excited to continue to celebrate a wonderful life on, on Wednesday night, the 30th, against Dickinson State. And, you know, former player Josh Vaughn coaching them, and, and we feel like, Chase, like I mentioned the other day, we have a very good product. The, the Shield Center inside the shack is a great venue, and we have some new fan amenities. But this game in particular means a whole bunch more than that, and very appreciative of our sponsors, Sanford Health and Gate City Bank, and, you know, wonderful, wonderful sponsors, wonderful friends, and, and for them to kind of tag team with us and, and be a part of this thing is, is really special because I think as we continue to find ways to celebrate Landon's life, and it was a wonderful life, too short, uh, but but as you talk and visit with Travis and Andrea, his parents, they, they want to continue to leave an impact. They want to continue to do in so many ways, like, like I mentioned during the eulogy of, of Landon's funeral, is to live like Landon lived, and, and then to help others find a way to beat cancer. And, and um, cancer does suck. Let's make that loud and clear. And unfortunately, way too many of us have been impacted. And, and for me, personally, my family, this was real up close and personal. This was right across the street, and this was a wonderful young man. This was a great example of through your toughest times of how to live live your life. And uh, this is a great, very appreciative of our marketing, you know, stepping in and, and saying, hey, let's, let's continue to do something for somebody that meant so much to us, continuing to find ways to honor him, continuing to find ways to create that impact that, that Travis and Andrea want to leave a la- lasting legacy. And, and this is a great way to do it. And hopefully there's some things with the, the lighted up part where we're going to shut the lights off and do some things with the cell phone that that can continue to go throughout the season. And uh, Landon meant so much to myself, our staff, but in particular, our guys. And, and I, I know they want to carry this thing on as, as long as I can in the right way. Is there one thing from Landon from when you guys kind of maybe got to know him in terms of the Tyson Wards and the Vinny Shaheeds on the team? Is there something that you want them to take from how they kind of can remember Landon, but also what's the best thing about Landon that they can use, you know, whether it's an on the court, in the classroom, or just, you know, away from school in general, Dave? To sum it up like this, Chase, Landon was the right guy. And we talk about the right guys in our program. The right guys do the right things no matter the circumstances. And Landon never made excuses. Landon still brought joy in his toughest times. It was never about Landon. And I think that that's it right there. If if you can make it about something else, good things happen to yourself. And and what I mean by that, and, and, and hear me out as I say good things in a tough situation, the good part was his faith, his family, and his friends never wavered for him. They never wavered for his friends and family around him because of those, because of how how he lived his life, the servant leader that, that he was, how he made us all better, and he, even through his darkest times. And that's something that I absolutely want our guys not to carry around. I don't care about a game specifically. I want them to carry it that on because uh, they're going to be better for it. Their, their wives, their, their, their sons and daughters, their employees, their employers are all going to be better for it. If we don't make this world about us, we make it about something, somebody else. It's crazy how that returns and reciprocates and good things happen to yourself. Bison men's basketball coach Dave Richmond with us. Dave, when we take a look at the season now, I know last year uh, I brought it up once or twice with you going, hey, there's no seniors on the team. And the kind of response was experience. This club just needs to get experience, whether that's going through the grind of a conference schedule, going through a Summit League tournament, winning some old close games through adversity. Well, now winning the Summit League tournament, winning the first four game against NC Central, playing a very competitive first half with Duke, obviously in the NCAA tournament, uh, is now the experience 
is is there and is it handling expectations now for 2019 2020 Dave yeah I think there's certainly Chase and make no mistake there's the experience is there you go back to after we got our tails kicked in in Brookings and I believe the 24th of January I told our guys in the post game that that's it that's the last experience that I can take you through that you haven't been through that's the number one team that's at their place there wasn't going to be really a tougher situation or circumstances there was and you could see it too in the quarterfinals against Oral Roberts as we started those first 10 minutes that was a new experience and in, and we got punched but thankfully we were able to punch just enough back to hang around when we got our feet under us we could really punch back and and so experience was a big part of that there was there was some injuries but you can see now the way the guys walk around the way they carry themselves there's a belief there's a care there, there's a understanding not just within what's expected from the coaches but who the next guy next to them is and there's an expectation of the energy the effort the attitude that's needed to do those things the expectations piece chase like i don't get caught up in that it's a word that we're more interested in the standards the standards that we need to keep every day if we work hard if we have fun all those quote-unquote expectations by the experts uh they'll take care of themselves and 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 i and i do know that because when we have focused on an expectation of that game or a month down the road or two months down the road or this or that we're missing out opportunities to get better and as experienced as this group is compared to last year's there's plenty of growth and opportunities to get better you start with us rebounding the basketball you start with our defensive numbers cleaning up some turnovers and some foul situations I can go on and on and on about how areas we need to get better at and especially sitting here on October 22nd 23rd whatever it is we're a long ways from being where we need to be and that's a good thing because we got a long ways to go too as well with the deep run that you made into the postseason into March and then all of a sudden you you look at August and you're going to Puerto Rico with that trip and bringing some new guys into the fold as well trying to find their footing in this Bison men's basketball team did you feel like you had a time to just kind of all right take a breath relax because it is I think a lot of people forget that the quote-unquote fall camp of, of, of basketball there is a lot of basketball before you get to even an exhibition game where you're grinding on each other where Vinny's going up against Tyson and vice versa and in a lot of drills do you feel like you ever had a chance just to put the feet up maybe for 24 hours Dave well that's why Chase that's why I love and appreciate our guys so much this is and we talk about in the recruiting process this is a lifestyle for four or five years of your life as a high school kid as you're recruiting a high school kid and his family you're you're sacrificing a ton and especially in basketball with the two major holidays of Thanksgiving and Christmas you're you might get a couple days here or there but for the most part you're with your bison family and and what are you going to sacrifice what are you going to give up how how much does this mean to you and you're right it, with it being the lifestyle with the access that we have this in the summer with the trip to puerto rico you spend a lot of time together and i think it's important where when you're away you're able to get away you're able to put the ball down for a little bit you're able to as a staff put the computer down and, and not dive into the film because when we start here like we did in the first part of october late september you're gonna you're grinded you're going hard for hopefully five and a half six months and you you need to have that even if even your own family right there's a dynamic there you need a balance you need to sneak away from each other a little bit if you're it's going to be a cats and dogs things if you're around each other but i also say this what i find chase is we had opportunities at the start of, of the summer and we had opportunities at the end of the summer to get away for, from each other for a couple weeks and that first week is really good and I'm speaking selfishly right <laughs> the first week is really good but you just get so accustomed to being around the guys and, and you enjoy being around the guys rolling into that second week believe it or not I start to miss those, miss those guys I don't know if they miss me <laughs> uh, but, but you kind of get into that rhythm of life a little bit too and, and you hear load management you hear periodization and I, and I will say that that's a big piece of this, it, especially in a mid-major program and in a league that's proven to be a one-bid league. We need to be playing well in November and December, but we need to be playing really well in February and March. And if we're grinding for four hours of a practice, if we're constantly at each other's throats in October, November, December, we're probably going to lose each other in February and March. And I think as you look at, you know, through through our tenure here, 9-3 and three in Sioux Falls, we've been in pretty good 
good shape and pretty pretty good position physically and mentally when we needed to be. And, and that's important that as excited and, and, again, to your words, the expectations that come with the season, maybe some things that we can do in the non-conference, and we don't forget about the big picture and that we're healthy, fresh, mentally and physically come February and March. NDSU men's basketball coach Dave Richmond with us. Dave, one thing about last year's team was the depth, obviously. I mean, you could go three, four, five, maybe six, seven guys on a particular night with matchups. Do you feel like you have that this year, uh, adding a couple of freshmen who I'm sure you're going to try to figure out into the fold with, with again, uh, Noah Christensen uh, a little bit. Uh, you got Tyson Ward, Chris, Jared, Vinny Shahid. They're all coming back. Rocky Cruz are on the inside. You bring Tyler in. Uh, you look at the Moorhead product and Malik, and you got Noah Christensen from, from Breckenridge, two freshmen who have a lot of high expectations being one local, but also their, their upside. So how do you get that same situation where you can feel like seven, eight, nine, ten guys potentially can play this year? Do you have that same feeling here in 2019? Absolutely. And I think to your question, it's twofold. Number one is everybody in our program is continuing to get better. The, the Jarius Cooks, the Jackson Notex, the Odell Wilsons, the guys that you maybe didn't see at all in Odell or you didn't see as much with Jarius and Jackson. But but there's still, there's still an uphill battle for all of those guys and all of us from a standpoint. The other guys that did play a little bit more, so to speak, they've gotten better as well. And, and I think that's the sign. You see some really competitive practices. There's one basketball in 200 minutes, and that's my job to divide up where those shots are going and how many minutes are getting. And so it, it makes us all better when we are intense, when we're diligent in our practices and you're competing against each other. These guys love each other, make no mistake, but they're also will walk a fine line and separate it and tee it up when it's time to tee it up and, and practice. But again, going back to your last question of – of being where we need to be in February, March, that depth is vital. You know, you don't want to speak about it, and I'm knocking on wood as we speak, but even last year with Sam and Cam, we had some injuries. Uh, does somebody roll an ankle and they're out for a weekend? Uh, getting other guys off the floor in, in different situations so they're so they're not uh, banging for, for 30 plus minutes uh, in November and December, and you need them fresh and healthy mentally and physically in, in February and March. A guy like Rocky Cruiser comes to mind. Uh, Rocky Cruiser is a special special talent and he's a guy that i think he's going to continue to surprise some people and just what he can do at his size but it's also on myself and our staff to make sure that we keep rocky on the court we keep him healthy we keep him moving around fresh and and that'll be a big thing where our depth comes in and i'm very encouraged very excited about it but i think that's also what's made our program very good is no matter if you're number one or 14 we're going to coach you like you're number one we're going to develop you we're going to build that strategy within you for an opportunity that if it is a next man up situation even if it's for a half or a weekend that we need we need all parts ready to go last thing for you dave i know a lot of people look at the power five games with kansas state to start the season and marquette as marquee games so to speak but you got an east tennessee state team who's a really good mid-major team that's predicted to win uh, their conference they're coming in early part of december into this venue here at the Shack. So what about the non-conference that's going to get you set for the, hopefully another run, as you mentioned earlier, Dave, in February and March that gets you ready for another run potentially down in Sioux Falls? Yeah, Chase, it, I think it's just lift, cut, and paste every year. When you're in Fargo, North Dakota, and you have a very good product like we feel we do, you're just going to play a tough schedule. You can try to schedule any way you want. At the end of the day, some of it is just the hands you're dealt. And absolutely, the, the two high majors stand out. Uh, but you you go back and dive through. A lot of people are going to be able to associate with Montana State being here, a Big Sky opponent, uh, just a, a border a border state. I think Utah Valley is a program in the WAC that's done really good over the years. But but yeah, I mean, if I'm sitting here looking ahead, which I shouldn't be doing, but but it's on the radar. East Tennessee State is a very very good outfit. Steve Forbes can really coach. You talk about experience. They got a lot of guys back on a team that took us to the woodshed last year. Uh, but we need to get better today tomorrow and do all those things but we're, we're very ex indiana state uh, to, to be able to get a valley school and we're going to start at their place they're going to come back and, and a two for one there's just a lot of good the, the corpus christi mte that we're able to be a part of a lot of very good mid-major programs corpus christi's good stony brook had a really good year last year and again i think that's all great where well, we need to get tested we need to put ourselves in some different situations and circumstances to prepare us for
for January, February, and ultimately March. And Dave, as always, thank you so much for your time. I know we'll be talking as the winter months get a little bit closer here, which means hoop season is going to heat up on the inside. So thanks so much for your time. Hey, good luck keeping Jack <laughs> Jack under control. You know, I know that's 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 part of the uh, duties as assigned otherwise. But <laughs> Chase, we appreciate you. Appreciate you having us on. Look forward to doing it, continuing to do it throughout the season. Since you brought up Jack, is there any snack that you give Jack just to make sure you keep him on your good side? Yeah, man. Is there any snack that Jack doesn't <laughs> like? You know, that's snacks and Mountain Dew, yeah. all that. Yeah, I think Jack's wired pretty, pretty good when it comes to sugar and caffeine.